Hello, my name is Martin. I'm from the Outro Frontal team at ElectroPartner, and I would like to give you some news about the program Outro Frontal and also some additional information about heat pump systems on electric cars. The heat pump system is part of the air conditioning system, and on electric cars, we refer to this as thermal management. This system controls the temperature inside of the cabin using as low energy as possible. It also regulates the temperature inside of the high voltage battery, so this system can affect the lifetime of the high voltage battery, but also the electric range of the car. So it's very important that you know how to repair a system with a heat pump. On a normal air conditioning system like this one, we have the heat at the condenser and the coal at the evaporator. And when it's running in heat pump mode, it actually works the opposite way. We now have the heat inside of the cabin and we have the cold outside of the cabin. But to make this function, we need some extra components. It's not just the air conditioning compressor turning the opposite way, because they are often using a scroll compressor and a scroll compressor can only turn one way. So we need some extra valves and some extra pipes. Here's a layout from a Volkswagen and the important thing to know about this system if you want to drain fill or evacuate the air conditioning system is that you need to open these electric shutter valves and also the electric expansion valves uh, using a diagnostic tool. So this is the most important thing to know when you are working on the air conditioning system on new electric cars because if you don't open these valves you can't reach the entire circuit of the air conditioning system and what would happen if you were trying to evacuate the system after you have done a flushing of the system and if you couldn't evacuate parts of the circuit. So this could potentially damage the entire air conditioning system. If the system is not optimally charged with the right amount of refrigerant, it can also affect the range of the electric car and perhaps also the effect of the heating or the cooling inside of the cabin. So you can see now it's very important that you know if a car is using a heat pump system when you do any repairs on the air conditioning system. This could also be a repair after a traffic accident where you replace parts, you still need to know how the system operates. So to know if a car has a heat pump system, we made a little video where we can see some of the indicators that the car is using a heat pump system. The first car we tested was a Toyota from 2021. We tested it at an outside temperature at minus 4.5 degrees. We activated the heat pump system using a smartphone. We set it to maximum heating of the cabin and that was 29 degrees Celsius. Before we can activate it using a mobile phone, you need to close all the doors and hatches. It didn't take long before the ventilator started and also the electrical compressor and this confirms that the heat pump system is now operating. It didn't take long before a lot of the air conditioning pipes close to the air conditioning compressor they had a thick layer of ice on them and this confirmed that the heat pump system was now operating. If you have a customer complaint on the heat pump system the most important thing you need to know is at what outside temperature is the fault present. The heat pump system or the climate system, it operates at different cycles depending on the customer's demand on the inside temperature of the cabin and the outside temperature in the environment. It has different operating cycles and it opens and closes different valves. In this case we can see that the operation cycle right now is parallel heating. So to diagnose a heat pump system, we actually need to know exactly the layout of the specific system. In this example, we show a layout of the Volkswagen e-Golf. If you look closer in the engine room of the Toyota, we see all the signs that the car is using a heat pump system. A lot more pipes and also the electrical valves. We can see it also have a high amount of refrigerant. It actually needs 1500 grams of refrigerant but this is also because that the EV battery is cooled by air conditioning. At first sight, it can be a little challenging to see if this car is using a heat pump system. But if we follow the pipes and look closer, we can locate the electrical valves. So this car is using a heat pump system. 
we can find more electrical valves if we look closer in this area. If you have a customer complaint about an insufficient heating of the cabin, we still need to consider how it works inside of the cabin. There's a lot of actuators that are moving according to the demand from the customer. So a diagnostic tool like this showing a dashboard mode, we can see which of the actuators that the system is activating according to the customer's demand. There's no doubt that in the future we will have a lot of different layouts of the heat pump system. On the Hyundai Ioniq it's clear to see that the car has a heat pump system. Beside the electrical compressor we can clearly see the electrical valves and also the four pipes going into the cabin. We did some measurements on a Renault Zoe from 2016. When the car came to the workshop it only had 500 grams of refrigerant and data said 1000 grams. So we tried to do some measurements where we compared the pressure, the temperature and the life data when it was only half charged with 500 grams and fully charged with 1000 grams. We are now testing the system pressure with an outside temperature of 20 degrees and the cabin set to maximum heating so this means maximum operating of the heat pump. The temperature on the low pressure side it was pretty much the same but when we measured the high pressure side we could see that when the refrigerant was only with 500 grams we had a little bit higher temperature and also the noise from the compressor was a little bit louder. This was actually the only difference that we could measure. It also didn't store any fault codes so we checked the system for leaks and we filled it up with 1000 grams. We returned it to the customer and a month later we spoke to the customer to get some feedback. He could definitely feel that the AC system was cooling a lot faster and also the heat pump system was heating the cabin up much quicker. He further noticed that the range of the battery was a little bit improved. I hope you now have a little idea about what to check if you want to know if a car has a heat pump system. I also encourage you to take every courses or seminars on air condition and thermal management on electric cars. The coolant systems on cars are also getting more and more advanced. If we go back to the air condition or the heat pump system, we can see here in the bottom there's a heat exchanger or a chiller. And this is because the system can transfer heat from the coolant circuit to the refrigerant circuit. And this way save energy when it's in heat pump mode. But this also means a lot more components in the coolant system. So when we need to bleed the coolant system on these cars, we need to open all the necessary shutter valves in the coolant circuit and also activate the circulation pumps according to the manufacturer specifications. So again, we need to connect our diagnostic tool when we do a simple bleeding of a coolant system. So pay close attention to how these things work and also you need to have the right technical data to do these repairs. A while ago I read this post that I found was interesting about the coolant system on an electric car. It had 22 liters of coolant and this was in 40 meters of cooling pipes. So of course there is a special procedure on how to bleed a coolant system like this. Here's an example from an Audi hybrid system. Imagine all the hoses, what would happen if you mixed some of them. Here's an example from a Volvo and again you can see the cooling systems, they are getting more and more advanced. This is also why we make our own guides to this in the program. There's a lot of demand for these procedures and you need to be very careful on how to do this. Often we can get requests on this on a car that is no older than two or three months. Perhaps it has been to a traffic accident and they have changed some component in the coolant systems and then they need a guide on how to do this. To find a guide like this, we go to bulletins and we select the category maintenance. At the top, we can find the procedure of how to bleed the coolant. And we can also find other procedures, for example, how to bleed the brake fluid. You can find a lot of other guides on maintenance because there's a big request on this in our hotline. We make our own guides based on what we get in the hotline 
and also we combine the OE information with the aftermarket information and the experience from brand specialists. Even a simple job as brake fluid, it requires a lot of steps on new cars, so if you don't know the car you're working on and it's a new car, go to maintenance section and see if there is some important information on how to bleed the brake fluid. We have also made some guides on how to disable the online system on some car brands. In this example it's the Volkswagen Group and they recommend you that you disable this system before you do any repairs on the car. Perhaps the customer can open the window while you're working on the car or perhaps start something with the air conditioning system that activates the cooling fan. So you will not only find TSBs on how to address a difficult fault in the program, you can also find maintenance guides and this is because we try to deliver the missing information on the workshops based on the hotline requests. Regardless of the technical data that you have available, the diagnostic tool you have and also the skill set of the mechanic, there's always some sort of information that you need out there and this is taking a lot of your time and this is what we try to provide you with in Auto Frontal. Next I want to show you a new feature that we have added and this is formulas. We recently added formulas to the program and hopefully you will find this very helpful. We have different conversions, we also have calculations on perhaps air mass or if you want something perhaps on lambda to air fuel ratio. We will continue to add new formulas according to the requests that we get. If you are new to the program you will probably find this information very helpful. To find the information that you need the quickest we first must select the car that you are working on and then we head to bulletins and now we have a search field here that I want you to consider just like a Google on the selected car. So if you want to find something on air suspension just write the word in the search field. Here we have the specific TSBs matching the car that we are searching on and we also have general TSBs. This could be very helpful if you want basic troubleshooting on an air suspension. And remember you can use all words in the search field. This could be timing belt, it could be coolant, it could also be heat pump. If you want to find a TSB using a fault code, you go to bulletins and you enter the fault code. You press search and now you have a specific TSB matching the fault code on the selected car. If you type in a fault code that is not matching the model you have selected, the program will take you further to the fault code section. So you are now under the fault code section and we have searched the fault code here, but we are now searching on all car brands and not on the selected car. If you find a fault code that is blue, this means there's a TSB linked to that fault code, but it doesn't mean that it matches the selected car you're working on. It can match the car brand or another car brand and you need to look at this by your own. So this can be used as inspiration. The footnote is something we added because we can see more and more on new cars the same fault code, in this case P200B. This can have a lot of different meanings and this can be confusing on aftermarket testers. So to give you the correct answer for the meaning of the fault code, you need to check out which of the control unit that the fault code is stored under. Then you know the exact meaning of the fault code. We are now entering the holiday season here in Denmark, so this means there could be a delayed response time at the end of July and also in the beginning of August. We also have fully closed in the company from the 18th to the 22 of July. And if you are ever in doubt of how to use the program, you can always press the help button here at the right corner and we have some video guides that I hope you will find very helpful to save you a lot of time and find the right information when you need them. Thank you for watching guys and have a nice summer.